song's called Go Now, and when I watched the movie, I had really no idea what part I would play in the music uh, when I watched it, so I had no agenda. I just kind of was enjoying it in the film, and I, I loved it so much, not just because he's sitting next to me, because I actually really did. So here we are, we got another chance for life, it's what you want. I can see it in your eyes. When he saw the film and his response to it was so encouraging, I just sort of shouted down the phone, if there's anything you want to do, if there's that final song needs some work, if you would sing it, it would really help our movie, so. And look at you with your happy ending. Yeah. Look at you with your happy ending, finally. It's all worked out three well, movies. <laughs> yeah. I'm so proud you got a happy ending. Look at you. Finally. just face ahead, no going back now. I don't think that at this point in time anybody is able to cohesively tie music to movies as brilliantly as he does it. I'm just hanging there. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> you don't just break out into song for no reason. There's always some actual reality-based reason mm -hmm. why music plays a vital role in the storytelling. And so I think that's what I love about it is that it doesn't feel like there's that uncomfortable kind of contact right. embarrassment yeah. from people going into song when they're not supposed to be that I personally can't really deal with. Mm -hmm. And so because I was able to love what he did, because I thought that he was so great at maneuvering around all those things, he's the best in the business at doing that, I think. The 80s, you know, people have a very kind of cookie cutter idea of what it was like, but there was great music in the 80s. And so this focuses on some really great stuff that was happening. Mm -hmm. Um, on a big scale, too. I mean, Duran Duran was huge. They made great music and the fashion and the whole thing that was happening, but you never feel at all like it's parodying the time. It seemed like a really realistic take on what was happening in the world. I did in the 90s what was happening in this movie in the yeah. 80s, which was I wanted to have hair like Eddie Vedder and I wanted to be in Nirvana and I want, I know, and every week it would be a different, yeah, every week it was like that. It was like I was wanted to be a different front man from a great band in the early 90s. And I wrote songs, I tried to sound like them and they were, I was terrible at it. But that's how like creativity when you're young starts is by like emulating yeah. your heroes. And when I watched it, I couldn't believe how right on the money it was as far as like the experience of being young and being into music and being so enamored by the whole thing that you want to dress like them, you want to write music like them, you want to get the girl the way they get the girl, you want to write the song that, that gets the girl. All that stuff that happens in that movie, I can't even tell you how 100% on the money that is. It's a fantastic movie. It's hard for me to say that this is my favorite movie of his because I was in the last one. <laughs> but it is, it's, it's, I think that the dude just uh, keeps making great movies and pisses me off because he's that well, talented. Because we'll we'll he's that prolific. We'll make another one together, don't worry. We, we're, we're gonna do it. We're gonna do it. We're gonna do it. We're gonna, we're gonna crush it. <laughs>